anybody uh, building a budget little synth setup here is going to appreciate the inclusion of a Volca. Um, the Volcas, for the most part, all work the same, uh, except the MIDI implementation on each one is different. So you do have to kind of look at the particular MIDI implementation for the Volca that you have. But generally speaking, um, they're all going to work roughly the same. Um, so in this case, I need to figure out what MIDI channel I'm on. Let's, uh, I think you do that by holding, is it memory when you turn it on? Yep. Okay, MIDI channel 10. That's no good because I'm using channel 10 elsewhere. Let's set it to channel number 15. Okay, record. Cool. So my Volca is now on channel 15. Um, now, I know you can't really make heads or tails of my cable spaghetti here, but what I'm doing here is I'm taking my second output, my second MIDI output from my headphone splitter on the model samples. I'm going to another uh, TRS Type A adapter into a standard MIDI cable into the Volca FM. Um, the power I'm getting from a separate battery that's kind of off screen here. I have one of these uh, MyVolt things for a bunch of Volcas. And um, the uh, audio, I did have to add a little mixer here. This is the, the MyVolt's $20 uh, little passive mixer. So I'm taking my model samples audio into the mixer, my Volca FM audio into the mixer, and then the output of the mixer through the NTS-1. So the NTS-1 is still glo adding global effects to the whole setup, right? Um, there are many, many other audio routing options here. Uh, I, we're going to do this just to keep it simple, um, but there's tons of other ways of routing the audio depending on how you want to apply effects or not apply effects to different things. So just to point that out. Okay, so we should be able to now hear our Volca FM. Great. You can hear it's getting a bit of effects here. I still have this um, reverb on. Let's switch to a different reverb. This cathedral reverb is oh, one of my favorites. Love it. Okay. So we have MIDI controllers, right? We want to use these. Well, um, for now, just to demonstrate, let's go back into our um, MIDI settings here, my MIDI ports. I'm going to change my out port to through mode. So now I'm doing MIDI through and on my key step change to channel 15 and now I can play my Volca FM from the keyboard. And just to point out, you know, this is a polyphonic synth, three notes, so I can make chords. Hooray! Three note chords, not four. <laughs> My, uh, I, I often want to play four note chords. So anyway, um, you can play whatever the polyphony max of that is. Now, um, the so this is an area where maybe I do actually want to use the key step sequencer so I can do a polyphonic sequence sending to the Volca FM and then monophonic sequences sending to you know other stuff. So it's an option. Um, now, I, I can't use my drum pads to control the Volca FM simply because these only send on channel 10. So I would have to set my Volca FM to also receive on channel 10 if I wanted to use these. So if I wanted to, I could. And, you know, let's just do it just to demonstrate. So power this off again. Um, power it on while holding memory. I'm on channel 10. Hit record. And I'm going to change this to my chromatic uh, kit here. So now... You can hear it's all pretty low, but I can use my transpose on here, bring it up higher. All right, so now I've got a pad interface for my Bulk FM, and it is also polyphonic. So for this type of setup, I probably wouldn't do that, but if you're using, um, like, say, the launch pad as your MIDI controller, you know, you would definitely want to do something like that, right? So um, let's set this back to MIDI channel 15. That's going to make a lot more sense. So changing the MIDI channels on the Volcas is pretty easy, but you do have to power cycle the thing every time you do it. So you can't do it, like, mid-performance, which is why you're going to rely on something like the key step that does let you change the MIDI channels mid-performance, right? So, like, right now, my, my Volca FM or switch to... My NTS-1, right? Or switch to any of these tracks. That one's muted, but why is that not making sound? <laughs> oh, I remember why. It's because I just had the volume down on these. Yeah, easy to forget stuff like that. <laughs> okay, so just to kind of recap on what we've got now here. Um, if I have this in my default kit, 
um, it is mapped out to my six drum pads, right? So that's like my drum kit. On my key step, I can um, go through the first six channels to selectively control any of these that I want. Um, I can go to channel 16 to control my NTS-1, and I can go to channel 15 to control my Volca FM. All right, so you can see that's like a whole lot of control from the, this kind of centralized place, and it's very quick to shift between all of these. And it's really not hard to like memorize which MIDI channel is which thing, because um, you're the one that defined them, you're the one that set them up. So um, it, uh, it just, it, it's really fluid actually, it makes a lot of sense when you're actually playing. Um, I'm gonna, I think a lot of these things benefit from being propped up a little bit. I'll just prop it up on the battery there, there we go. Okay, so um, now let's play around with sequencing the Volca FM from the model samples. Now again, the model samples, uh, it's only sending monophonic sequences per track, right? So let's switch to uh, our track six. I'm gonna go into my MIDI menus here, and I'm going to set the out channel to be, uh, let's see, so track six is gonna send out to channel 15, which is the Volca FM, and that is still on MIDI through mode, so let's change this to MIDI out mode. There we go. Okay, so now when I play this, channel 6, we're going to hear that. If I play channel 15, we hear nothing because I'm on MIDI out mode and not MIDI through mode, right? So keep that in mind. So, uh, but that's okay. Let's change back to channel 6. So I already have a sequence here that should just play now. Mute everything else. So there's my track six sequence. I'll turn down the volume on the model samples so we're only hearing the Volca. All right, and I can transpose it. And you can hear it's still getting its reverb effect from the NTS-1 also, right, which I can play with. So I'm sending a monophonic sequence to the Volca FM. That's all great, well and good. I'm not using the internal sequencer here at all. But notice it did send start stop, right? I stop here, play, see it does move the playhead. So if I wanted to use the internal sequencer here, I could. And so let's just demonstrate that, right? So I'm playing this sequence, turn on my record mode here. Oh, I apparently I already have a sequence in there. Let's clear that out. Let's start over. Okay, so I cleared this sequence. Now I'm gonna hit play. interesting thing. What happened there um, is that when I hit record on this, not only was it recording the notes that I was inputting on the little, you know, touch keyboard here, it was also recording the MIDI notes being sent from the sequencer. So on the um, model samples, we've got this simple three note sequence playing, right? I shortened it down to 16 steps so that it matches the Volca. Okay, this, this sequence is totally cleared out. But if I record on here, I can actually record that sequence into it. So now if I play on here, perfect exact copy of what I had over here, which now frees up this sequencer track to go do something else, which is pretty cool actually, and I, I find that useful. Um, now with the Volcas, you're limited to 16 step sequences, which is not so useful, but you know, with whatever sequencer you have, hopefully, it, or whatever synthesizer you have, if it has a better internal sequencer, you can use this awesome sequencer to like write something and then teach it to the downstream sequencer, thus freeing up this track to do something new, right? So I think that's actually um, kind of an important, uh, an important thing to point out, that like even though you're limited to six tracks here, if your downstream synths also have their own internal sequencers, you can use those in conjunction, right? Um, and then likewise, I still have my key step sequencer too. If I wanted to bring it into play, I could. So um, let's do this though. So we've got these, um, instead of them playing the same thing, I'm going to have the internal sequencer on this play something else, and we'll hear how they 
interplay together. Okay, so when I had this in record mode, it was both recording the notes it was sent from the model samples as well as the, the two, two more notes that I input. So if we play this, we should hear the whole thing. Versus if I play just this, we're only going to hear the model sample sequence. Right, so you can kind of use it, its own little internal sequencer, as a way of adding another layer, which is kind of cool. They can even run out of sync with each other if you want them to, right? Or you can make them be in sync. So yeah, I have a lot of fun with kind of the interplay of different sequencers like this, like making one of them teach to the other one or making them kind of fight and conflict in different ways and see which one comes out on top. And like, there's just, I don't know, it's just fun to like mess around. Uh, you, you wind up in places that you didn't expect, which I think is always uh, a valuable thing. And I've got yet a third layer of sequencer if I wanted it. Let's now kind of get away from the complexity of polyphony. I'm gonna put the uh, Volca FM in unison mode. Um, it has both a monophonic mode and a unison mode. Unison just means it's taking all three of its oscillators to make the same note, right? Um, so it just makes it fatter, kind of. And so let's do that. So I'm gonna have this be in its unison mode. That means whenever I send it notes, it's just gonna play that one note. It's not gonna do chords or anything. And that's gonna be a better fit for how I have it set up with the model samples here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have track six in the model samples be my Volca FM. Track five is going to be my NTS-1. Both of them are mono synths uh, in effect. So let's make sure my settings are correct. MIDI out channel is going to be 15 for here. And then this one's gonna be 16, perfect. And now this one I'm gonna set back. Okay, so all the rest, all the rest of these tracks are just doing drums, they're not sending any synth. Uh, these two are my two synth tracks, okay. So let's go back in here. I'm gonna set this to track five so I can play it. Turn up my volume here. Make sure MIDI out is enabled. Super easy to forget about that. Okay, so that is this sound. Let's change that oscillator to something else. Go with this one. Okay, and then let's play our sequencers and see what happens. Unmute that. For simplicity, um, we're only hearing the NTS-1 and the Volca FM right now. Track 5 is controlling my NTS-1. Track 6 is controlling my Volca FM. Each one of them is playing a monophonic sequence. Right? Um, now, each one of those sounds, we can also layer with whatever sounds are here internally in the model samples. And so let's bring those in. Uh, let's focus on just the NTS-1 first and get something that we like. Get some other weird sound on here. Oh, come on, cat. Get out of here. Ugh. Just the sound for a minute. It's 
So again, with the NTS-1 not having specific level controls for the synth voice, I'm forced to use the filter to try to mix these two, right? So what I want to do is layer them so we hear both, but the NTS-1 synth voice can be very, very loud, especially when you're using a passive mixer like this, which is attenuating or weakening the signals coming into it. So it's easy for the NTS-1 synth to just be way too loud. Okay, so there's that, we'll leave it like that. And now we'll bring in track six. Bring in this sound also. FM, I do have a, a manual level knob, right? So I can easily mix these two sounds to get them to be something that we both want to hear. Bring in some drums. Cool, that was fun. So, um, 
you may have noticed like when I started hooking up the Volca FM and running things through this passive mixer, the all the drums on the model samples, they kind of they lost a lot of their punchiness. Um, they all sounded a lot more muted, a lot more quiet. I had to kind of keep cranking up the volume on here. Um, and the reason is just because I'm using a passive mixer here. Um, it's just normal. Anytime you have a passive mixer, you're reducing the, uh, the electrical signal uh, and therefore you're reducing the volume. Um, and so and the NTS-1 here, um, you can trim down, like you can make the input uh, quieter or less hot, but you can't make it more hot. There's no gain on this input. And so that's just a kind of an artifact of the way I'm setting it up here using a cheap passive mixer. If you had a active mixer, you know, that has its own power supply, um, you wouldn't have that problem because an active mixer is going to be able to boost whatever signal's coming in and give you more options to uh, to get the mix kind of where you want it. So this is a cheapo option. It's functional. You know, you can hear everything, but it does start to get too quiet, especially if you start using more of the inputs. I found using two or three of the inputs on this is okay. If I try to use all five inputs, it's too quiet to even be usable. You know, um, the other thing that on my audio recorder here, my input actually does have a bit of gain, so I can boost the level here a bit if I want to, so I can kind of compensate for that, but you're, you're kind of losing audio quality when you do that, so it's not really recommended. So as you get into a more complex setup like this, you're probably going to have to just invest in a mixer at some point. Um, and we could do a whole other video on using a mixer, using the send and receive uh, for your effects channel versus having it be kind of uh, part of the, the primary master chain here. There's all sorts of different ways to do it, but like, don't worry about that. I hope what I've demonstrated here, what I've tried to demonstrate is that you can start with the model samples as the brain, as like the core of the whole setup. You can expand it by adding one or more MIDI controllers uh, upstream of it. Like, so the MIDI controllers are gonna go into the MIDI in on this. And then you can also expand it by adding one or more synths or effects boxes downstream, right? And those are gonna go MIDI out to that. But the core of this whole setup is the model samples or maybe a more expensive electron box doing the same job, right? Um, and there's, there's so much flexibility in how you can route the MIDI um, and how you can use, you know, you can kind of create your own custom like choke groups and mute groups like I've done. You can change, you know, which MIDI controller is going to which synth uh, that you want to control. You can change those on the fly with something like the key step. Um, there's just, there's a ton of flexibility here. And um, it's, it takes a bit of doing to get all the MIDI channels correct and to like make sure your MIDI settings are correct in the model samples. But once you learn how to do it, once you learn you know, the way that it should work, it's, it's not that hard. And it's really fast to get in there and kind of quickly change things around. Since the model samples does not have the combined MIDI out and through mode, it can't do both things at once, it's one or the other. One of the, my little workarounds for that is to actually leave it on this MIDI menu option, uh, the out slash through, and then mid performance or mid messing around, I will actually switch which mode it's in. So I'll demonstrate that. So I have my key step set to channel 15 which is my Volca FM. Currently it's doing nothing because I'm in MIDI out mode and it's only receiving its sequence here. But kind of, I will let it play its sequence and then switch to a live play mode. So right now we're hearing its sequence and now I press this. Now I can live play on it. And then go back to its internal sequence. Yeah, I, I consider that kind of a workaround, but um, it's not bad either. Like it, it's, it's totally functional, and um, it's uh, it's pretty fun. Like it's I just I like this setup that it kind of lets you jump in and like pick any anything you want, any of these six tracks or any of your downstream synths, and like say I want this to be my lead right now, and just change your MIDI channel, maybe change that to MIDI through mode if you need to, and just dive into it, right? So. Um, and then when you're done, change it back to MIDI out and you're gone back to whatever the sequence was before. So like it, it kind of lets you create little parts of the song like that if you want to. Um, it's just fun.